If Muhammad were truly a good prophet, why then did he vindictively curse the Christians and the Jews at his deathbed instead of asking Allah to guide them to the truth of Islam? I must point out to our listeners anyway what is actually obvious, that the reports that I shall be quoting are from the most authoritative Muhammadan Muslim sources, that all the following and other hadiths are the one-sided and unsubstantiated reports by the followers of Muhammad. Humanity does not have a single eyewitness report from Muhammad's victims, the Jews of Khaybar, who were either slaughtered, enslaved, or exiled. About two months before his attack on Khaybar, Muhammad failed in his attempt to go to Mecca. This failure resulted in the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah with the Meccans. He returned humiliated in the eyes of the Meccans and in the minds of his people. To uplift their defeated spirit, Muhammad told his followers that the events at Hudaybiyyah were really a victory. In fact, another made-to-order revelation was given to Muhammad as proof, Al-Fatih 48.1. Since Allah did not deliver the Meccans goods as booty, Muhammad decided to attack and plunder the weaker and unsuspecting Jewish settlement of Khaybar instead. About six weeks after Hudaybiyyah, Muhammad led his army and attacked the Jews of Khaybar while they were on their way to work on their date palms. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 1.584 narrated by Humaid. Anas bin Malik said, The inhabitants of Khaybar came out with their baskets and spades and when they saw the Prophet, they shouted, Muhammad, by God, Muhammad and his army. Khaybar was an agricultural settlement defended by a number of forts spread apart from each other. One by one, Muhammad's army took the forts. Finally, the last few surrendered to him. Muhammad had several of the leaders of the Jewish settlement beheaded. One leader, Kinana, was tortured to reveal where buried treasure was hidden. Then, when Kinana was near death, Muhammad commanded that he be beheaded. Many of the women and children were enslaved. Muhammad even took the most beautiful woman for himself. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 5.522 narrated by Anas bin Malik. The beauty of Safiya bin Huyay, whose husband had been killed while she was a bride, was mentioned to Allah's apostle. The Prophet selected her for himself and set out with her. Safiya became clean for her menses, then Allah's apostle married her. Muhammad just had her husband, father, and menfolk slaughtered right in front of her eyes. By any standard of logic and morality, he raped her. Immediately following the conquest of Khaybar, a Jewish woman prepared a dinner for Muhammad and some of his men. From Ibn Sa'ad, pages 251-252. When the Apostle of Allah conquered Khaybar, and he had peace of mind, Zainab bin Tilharith inquired, Which part of the goat is liked by Muhammad? They said, the foreleg. Then she slaughtered one from her goats and roasted it. Then she wanted a poison which could not fail. The Apostle of Allah took the foreleg, a piece of which he put in his mouth. Bishr took another bone and put it into his mouth. When the Apostle of Allah ate one morsel of it, Bishr ate his and other people also ate from it. Then the Apostle of Allah said, Hold back your hands, because this foreleg informed me that it is poisoned. Thereupon Bishop said, By him who has made you great, I discovered it from the morsel I took. Nothing prevented me from emitting it out, but the idea that I did not like to make your food unrelishing. When you had eaten what was in your mouth, I did not like to save my life after yours. And I also thought you would not have eaten it if there was something wrong. Bishop did not rise from his seat, but his color changed to green. The Apostle of Allah sent for Zainab, and said to her, What induced you to do what you have done? She replied, You have done to my people what you have done. You have killed my father, my uncle, and my husband. So I said to myself, If you are a prophet, the foreleg will inform you. And others have said, If you are a king, we will get rid of you. Bishr realized that there was something wrong with the bad-tasting meat. He ate it nonetheless because he was fully convinced that as a prophet, Muhammad should have known or been forewarned by Allah of the poisoning. In fact, both the Jewish woman and Bishr were correct in believing that had Muhammad been a true prophet, he would have been forewarned. But Muhammad was a liar and hence died from poisoning. Moreover, why did the leg talk to him after he ingested the poison and not before? 
It would have been a true miracle if it had talked to him before eating the poisoned meat. The Apostle of Allah lived after this three years till in consequence of his pain he passed away. Ibn Sa'ad, page 244. And there has been no prophet but he has lived half the life of the prophet preceding him. Jesus, the son of Mary, lived for 125 years. And this is the 62nd year of my life. He, the prophet, died half the year after this. According to Muhammad, Jesus not only did not die on the cross, but he also lived longer than Moses. As was usual with Muhammad, he concocted stories as he went along. Sahih Muslim, Volume 3, 54401 Aisha reported that when Allah's Messenger fell ill, he recited over his body Mu'awwidatan and blew over himself. When his sickness was aggravated, I used to recite over him and rub him with his hand in the hope that it was more blessed. Ibn Sa'ad, page 265. Aisha used to say, When the Apostle of Allah fell ill, Gabriel chanted on him saying, In the name of Allah who will cure you and who will heal you from every malady and will ward off the evil of envier who envies and from smite of the evil eye. How is it possible or logical that Gabriel was praying without knowing that Allah had decided for Muhammad's death? Sahih al-Bukhari 2.472, narrated by Aisha. Allah's Apostle in his fatal illness said, Allah cursed the Jews and the Christians, for they built the places of worship as the graves of their prophets. Let us now summarize the events. Muhammad attacked Khaybar. He destroyed, murdered, plundered, tortured, and enslaved many people. The Jews were not preparing to attack him. They were ambushed. A Jewish woman whose family had been wiped out by Muhammad, put poison into a goat and fed it to him and others. Muhammad ingested some of the poisoned goat and began to feel its effects. He died three years later as a result of the poisoning. Many times previously, Muhammad claimed to have had revelations that warned him of danger. He even used one of these convenient upon request revelations as grounds to attack the Jewish settlement of Banu Nadr. Yet at Khaybar the revelation came too late, too late to save his own life or that of Bishr's. As his illness wore on, Muhammad began to pray for healing. He even rubbed his healing hand upon himself. Gabriel also got into the act and prayed for his recovery. Obviously, at this point in time, Muhammad wanted very much to be alive. When his illness got progressively worse, Muhammad realized at last that it was the end. He ceased praying for healing and then declared that Allah had given him a choice to go to paradise or living on earth. Muhammad said he wanted to go to paradise. Knowing the game was up, Muhammad made the best out of his situation. Ibn Hisham, page 679. Then he, Muhammad, said, Allah has given one of his servants the choice between this world and that which is with Allah, and he has chosen the latter. Moses knew about his coming death, Deuteronomy 34.15. Jesus also knew of his death, Mark 8.32. Allah obviously did not see fit to inform his beloved Muhammad of his impending death. Muhammad was most certainly not a prophet. Only when he realized he was dying did Muhammad spiritualize his suffering and came to terms with death. Until the very end, he was full of hate and vindictiveness against his victims, the Christians and the Jews. For references, please read from the following. Sahih Bukhari, this hadith is considered to be the most important Islamic book after the Quran. Ibn Ishaq biography, Sirat Rasulullah, is the most authentic biographical literature recognized in Islam. Ibn Sa'ad's biography, Kitab al-Tabaqat al-Kabir, volume 2, of the three, Ibn Sa'ad Sirat contains the most information relative to Muhammad's death. Tabari's history is one of the most highly respected authors in Islamic writings. His history is 39 volumes. Sahih Muslim, this collection of hadith is considered to be equal to or slightly below Bukhari's collection of hadith. When studied in full, they all give unintentionally an extremely unflattering portrayal of Muhammad.